my sermon, and I don't know that I'll even preach, but I want to read the Christmas story about Jesus. The greatest story ever told. And it's more than just a story. It's more than a story. It's truth. It's life. Amen. There's more to it than uh, this being a bedtime story or a fairy tale or, or just something that somebody come up because they thought it would uh, sell millions. I mean, we're talking about in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And all things were made by Him and for Him. Without Him was not anything made. We're talking about the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We're talking about Jesus being born of a virgin. Amen. So I'm going to ask Cindy if she don't care to get the lights. Don't fall asleep on us. Probably be you, Donald. What? So... But we want to, I mean, really understand or try to, I mean, we, we, we celebrate Christmas every year. We celebrate Christmas every year. But do we really celebrate it? I mean, I'm guilty of rushing to buy the presents and rushing to get this and rushing to do that when really... Do we really take the moment for what Christmas is really about? And no, it's not about December 25th. It's not about Christmas Eve. It's not about, it's not about the day. Just like the American flag, and I've told the kids this at school, the, the American flag is not really about the American flag. It's about what it represents. The American flag represents men and women that fought and died for us, that gave their life, that sacrificed. The Christmas story is the beginning of humanity. It's the beginning of the Word becoming flesh. It's the beginning of that. It's not the beginning of God, because God has no beginning, and He has no end. But for you and I, the Christmas story... The birth of Jesus is the beginning of salvation. And as we read through, we want to read, we're going to read both accounts. We're going to read the account uh, uh, from the book of Luke, and we're going to read from the book of Matthew. But I want to first read out of Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. It says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The story of the birth of Christ is told through Luke. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And that taxing was first made with Cyrenius from the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was the ha of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, uh, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels was gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorified and praising God for all the things that had heard and seen. And it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And that's the account from the book of Luke, as we're going to read uh, from the book of Matthew. And I hope before I, I start with the book of Matthew, I, I hope you can actually begin to picture and begin to, in your mind, imagine, praise be to God, just as Faith Walk does the, the skits and does the plays and, and does the Christmas play. And, and I'll have the two come out and, and depict Mary and Joseph as they uh, come with a babe uh, uh, wrapped in swaddling clothes and they lay him in a manger uh, and how the shepherds come about uh, and begin to praise and worship him. Uh, uh, praise be to God. I, I hope you can understand and see uh, uh, just the magnitude uh, and the, the uh, awesomeness and all that, uh, the splendor and the glory uh, uh, that took place uh, uh, some 2,000 years ago or a little longer. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, when a, birth, a baby was born of a virgin, praise be to God. We say we believe in the virgin birth, but praise be to God, do, do we really believe it? Do we really stand upon the word of God and what it says, praise be to God, that it says that a baby was born of a virgin, that it was conceived uh, because uh, of the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, praise be to God, uh, uh, come upon her, uh, uh, praise be to God, uh, and blessed her, uh, uh, praise be to God, uh, and told her, uh, uh, blessed art thou Mary, uh, uh, praise be to God. I mean, really think about what took place. I mean, if you put it in terms, I'll get to that in a minute, praise God. But if you put it in terms today, praise God, what you have here is you've got a boy and a girl that are dating. Back then, they called it being a spouse. Like, you all hooked up, you all getting married, it's all arranged. You don't get to pick, I pick for you. And all that, but praise be to God, that was going to, Mary was going to be Joseph's wife. They weren't married yet. And then she's pregnant. What you talking about, Mary? I mean, just think about it. Today, it ain't no big thing because that's how society looks. It's all right. No, it ain't all right. But then it was all right because what was taking place, it wasn't all right that they weren't married. That's not what I'm getting at. What was all right was because God was in it. Because it wasn't Joseph that was fathering the child. And that's what the world will have, try to have people to believe. Say, well, it's because of this. It really wasn't a virgin birth. It's not possible. But yet they're the same ones that say that a man and a man should be together and a woman and a woman should be together and it's all right to shack up and it's all right to do this and it's all right to do that, praise God, and it's not all right. But they'll want us to believe more of a blob being a, a spewed out of something or, or, or things clashing together and, uh, and then all of a sudden it just boom and it happened, praise be to God. 
They want you to believe that you came from a monkey. Praise God. I, I'm asking. I said, well, where's the timeline? It shows a timeline of the monkey. And as he, as he goes and goes and goes, he becomes a man. I, I said, why don't we see anybody in between anymore? How, how did that get done away? If that's how it is, if we evolved, uh, uh, as Darwin said, praise God, I guess it was Darwin. Uh, uh, but if we evolved from monkeys, why ain't it still happening? Why did God say that he would uh, make man and woman and that they were to uh, procreate or however you want to say it? They're going to have kids. Amen. To me, it takes more faith, praise God, to believe all that other than what it takes to believe what the Word of God says. And the Word of God is true, as we said, I believe, Sunday. Uh, let every man be a liar. Amen. Praise be to God. I say, well, that's just because you believe it uh, doesn't mean it's so. No. See, because I believe the Word of God does not make the Word of God so. I can tell you it's not raining outside. Does that make it so? I can hear it raining. I know it's raining. But just because I says it's not, I don't make the Word of God. I don't make God. God made me. Amen. See, God, without me, God is still God. And I've said this many times. Without me, God is still God. Amen. Amen. But me without God, huh? I'm filth. I'm filthy flesh. There's no good thing in me. There's no good thing that dwelleth in me, praise be to God. But the Holy Ghost has set me apart because of the virgin birth, because of the story, because of what took place. Amen. Let me read on here as we go. If I had the energy, praise God, and the Lord would preach me all the time, I'd never be sick. You say, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, the Spirit of God comes upon you. It don't matter if you got earache, backache, footache. It don't matter. Praise God. Uh, uh, the Spirit of God will set you apart uh, from the firmities of this world. Uh, uh, praise be to God. He'll take you and set you upon that rock. Uh, uh, glory to God and make you feel real good. Amen. Here we go. Matthew, the story of the birth of Christ. And you can Google anything you want. Amen. Google KJV and you'll find everything for KJV. Amen. Praise God. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David into the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. If you're smart enough to figure and count all that up, go right ahead and do it. Praise God. I, I'm just going to take for what the Word of God says. I, uh, praise be to God. It don't have to prove nothing to me. I, uh, praise God because God's already proved to me that He is faithful. And he is just and he is righteous. Praise be to God. And it's good enough. Amen. Let me get calmed down here. I'll get to where I want him to be able to get through this. Hey, now the birth of Jesus was on the wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, Amen. Praise God. That's, that's the problem. We, we don't have a whole lot of just men uh, around anymore. Praise God. That are just men. Huh? Hey, everything else under the sun. Hey, I'll try. Let me hush. Let me get through this. And not willing to make her a public example was, I mean, really grab a hold of what's going on here. Not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, I fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and there shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. 
which is being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, uh, behold, there came wise men uh, from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when they had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of all the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, Art thou the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy, and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And they had opened their treasures, and they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Praise be to God. I, I think it, if you read on there, it'll talk about how that you know Herod there, he wanted the wise men to come back, um, uh, tell us where this child Jesus is. Uh, he says, I I want to come and worship him. I uh, praise God. He did not want to go and worship him. He wanted to go uh, and kill the child. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, but I believe the Bible talks about how an angel of the Lord came and, and warned the wise men or, or instructed them to go another way. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, we have where the angel of the Lord uh, uh, come to Mary and, and tell her that they're going to be uh, uh, found with child. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, uh, will come upon you and all this and, and I done told you how I said that she was blessed among all women uh, uh, praise be to God uh, and I read there uh, how an angel uh, of the Lord uh, uh, came to Joseph uh, uh, praise be to God uh, and spoke to him uh, he being a just man uh, uh, would not make her an example uh, uh, but praise be to God uh, the angel of the Lord came uh, and told him uh, uh, to take her uh, and be a wife be his wife and all that had, uh, uh, because the Holy Ghost uh, had come upon her uh, and that she was carrying uh, uh, the baby Jesus. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, do you get what we're getting at? Uh, uh, the Christmas story is just the beginning uh, of salvation uh, uh, for you and I. Praise be to God. Uh, uh, because it didn't end at the cradle. Uh, uh, but praise be to God. Uh, just as we preached the other day uh, about how uh, angels will come and minister unto you. Praise be to God. They will strengthen you. I, I may have got mixed up a little bit. I can't really remember if they came to him when he was in the garden, but I know when he fasted 40 days uh, and 40 nights, uh, uh, praise be to God, uh, and afterward he was a uh, hungered, uh, and how that uh, Satan came uh, and tempted him. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, make these stones uh, uh, bread because you're hungry and eat. Uh, I'll give you all this. Uh, uh, cast yourself down. Uh, he'll uh, give his angels charge to bear you up and all this but praise be to God each time uh, uh, Jesus said it is written uh, it is written uh, it is written uh, uh, praise be to God uh, uh, so we're without excuse uh, uh, praise be to God uh, uh, we have all the resources uh, available uh, to you and I uh, uh, praise be to God uh, yeah when we stumble and fall uh, uh, praise God uh, uh, we don't have to lay in the muck in the mire in the mud uh, uh, but we can get up uh, uh, we can wash ourselves 
ourselves off. We can repent. We can turn from it. Uh, praise be to God. And the angels of the Lord, uh, He will come. They will come. Uh, and they will minister unto you. They will lead you and they will guide you. Just as they did uh, uh, Mary and Joseph. I, I think they was going to go to Egypt there. And He told them to go another way. Uh, uh, praise be to God. But, but the thing is, what He done then, uh, He will do now. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Amen. He will not leave you comfortless. Amen. Praise be. Do you really believe in the word of God? Amen. Do you believe uh, the virgin birth? Do you believe the cross of Calvary? Uh, uh, the blood that was slain, uh, uh, shed upon Calvary's mountain. Uh, a lamb that was led to slaughter uh, that opened not his mouth. Uh, uh, praise be to God. There were no guile found in him. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, Father, uh, uh, forgive them uh, for they know uh, not what they do. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, beaten, uh, uh, mocked, uh, uh, spit upon, uh, crowned of thorns uh, uh, placed upon his head, uh, a beard uh, uh, plucked from his face. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, whipped uh, uh, with a cat uh, of nine tails. Uh, uh, the flesh uh, uh, ripped from his body. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, why? Uh, because uh, uh, God is love and he loves you and does not. Uh, it's not his will uh, uh, that any should perish uh, uh, but all come to repentance. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, but he gives us uh, a free will uh, uh, which way to choose? Uh, uh, which way will you choose? Uh, which way have you chose? Uh, uh, praise God. Which way will you continue to choose? Uh, uh, praise God. Amen. I ain't saying you ain't going to fall. We all fall. I fall. We fall short. From time to time we fall short, but we have an advocate. Amen. Which is Christ Jesus the righteous. We have a, 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 a go-to I don't have to stay down and out. Amen. Praise be to God. I don't have to stay lip dragging the ground, pruned up, soured up. I don't have to stay that way. Amen. Praise be to God. He has set my feet upon a rock. Glory to God. He has established my goings. Praise be to God. I know that he has good for me. Praise be to God. I know without a shadow of a doubt. Praise be to God. Hey Amen. We struggle when I was making 20,000 a year and making almost 50,000 now. We still struggle the same. Why? Because I spin, spin, spin. All right? But I'm a better steward now than what I was then. I'm getting better. I'm a growing. Are you getting better? Amen. Praise. Are you growing? Are you maturing in the Lord? Are you allowing Him to tear you down and peel that onion away and all that? Peel them layers. Or are you still mad at the world? You still mad at your neighbor? Still mad at this one? Still mad at that one? Huh? I was going to read the other night and I didn't get to it, but uh, he, they was asking his, his disciples or whoever it was, the apostles there, I think it was disciples asking, uh, how should we pray? Teach us to pray. How should we pray? Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallow be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. And another place says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our trespassers. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Where's Isaiah at? Where you at, Isaiah? Huh? They get fired up. This is what our, our little football team and our, our wrestling team, they say the Lord's Prayer at the end of practice. For thine is the power, the glory, forever, forever, forever. They'll go about five forevers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I don't, you know, and this is just me. I'll throw it out there. You want to take a bite on it or whatever you can. And I'm speaking for me personally. In my young walk, it was easy for me to forgive others. But it wasn't easy for me to forgive me. I mean, 
Brother Rob said it many times, your worst enemy is your mind. Huh? Like I said, I, I, with age, my thought processes have changed. Used to, I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was worthy of anything. And I know people say, well, you know, I'm unworthy. I am unworthy, but man, I've got to be something. He sent his only begotten son to die upon a cross. If that don't mean something, I don't know what does. God sees something in us that I don't know that we'll ever comprehend or we'll ever be able to fathom what God sees in us. Because of the Holy Spirit, praise be to God, he don't see the fleshly Philip Rowe anymore. Because of the Spirit of God, he doesn't see my cardinal nature anymore. Because I have repented. I have turned from my wickedness. I have turned from my ungodliness. I have asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins. I have been uh, uh, released of that bondage, praise be to God. I have came out of Egypt, praise be to God. And yeah, there have been times that I've turned and, and said, well, I'll go back, praise God. But what, would, what are you going to go back to? What's to go back to? And I've done told you this. We've been praying or I've been praying. I don't know if Isaiah is praying or not about it. About the race car. And that one car keeps coming back, keeps coming back. And the car we went and looked at it on the very back, it's it's plain black car, black and orange. That's my favorite colors. Get over it. Say, well, black's, black's the demon. Uh, if you're hung up on colors, that's, you know, shame on you. That was always my Harley. I'd stick, I'd stick me a Harley Davidson sticker on my car. It was black and orange. I said, that's my Harley. Because I always have to have a cage and a fire extinguisher and fire suit and helmet. See, I protected. Five-point harness. I was buckled up for safety. Hey, Amen. I flipped cars. I've rode cars. I've had door bars shoved over to the center of the car. Hey, Amen. God's taking care of me. But we went and looked at that car. And on the very back, the only thing it has on it is Jesus saves the Lord wants us, like I said, if he wants us to have it, it'll be there whenever we go get it. If he wants us to have it. But just like I said, if he doesn't, I'm all right with it. It's not a have to thing. But as he talked about earlier, being a city that's set upon a hill. Each one of us that's in here, whether you believe it or not, God has given you a platform where you're at. You may say, well, I don't ever do nothing. I don't go nowhere. I stay at the house all the time. Well, if you're here tonight, you don't stay at the house all the time. All right. God has given you and I a platform, whatever it is. You may think that you have no purpose. You have purpose. From the front row to the very back row, it's here tonight. You have purpose. And you will touch a certain amount of people that nobody else can touch. I believe that with my whole heart. I do. I believe that with my whole heart. At one time, we had what? Nine, ten preachers here? Somebody said, why y'all got so many preachers? Because it takes that many to preach to the ones that are here. We've got so many different people. But some have gone. Some have moved on to other places. Some need to get their butt back in church. Some have, uh, how, you, what, how you say it, rejected their calling or, or forsaken their calling. But God has placed a purpose in your life. And you've got to believe that. No matter how many times Satan tells you that you're nothing. That's all he's good at. Is telling you that you're nothing. That is a lie from the devil. You are something because you're made in the image and likeness. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I'm, and I'm not saying, like I said, yeah, there's going to be times we get down. 
But man, I'm a child of the living God. I have a Savior that's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. Praise be to God. The creator of the world, praise God, that breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils and made him a living soul, praise be to God, has made a way for me to enter into his kingdom. That he has written my name in the Lamb's book of life, praise be to God, that he has taken my sins and has cast them as far as the east is from the west to never be remembered. The greatest gift ever given. That doesn't cost mankind a dime. But Jesus gave it all. And I'm so thankful for that. Amen. Rob, I'm done wherever you're at. <laughs> Amen. Really, I mean, I know, and I know we've said it before. Really remember what the Christmas season is about. I mean, really get it. As I told Cindy, I said, I can, you know, turn the lights down a little bit. And I said, Lord, kind of showed me. And that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. That's what Christmas is all about. Yeah. That's a little Kobe Jack. Christian's a little boy. He packed that blanket around. So, amen. But that's what, that's what Christmas is all about. And ain't you glad it didn't stop there? Huh? Ain't you glad you know, it didn't stop there? There is so much in that Bible. Amen. It's just, uh, you know, if, if everything was told, the books in this world cannot contain it. This can't. We just, we just got to snip it. We've got to snip it. Amen. Got enough to make you hungry. And I hope you're hungry for, for the Word of God. I hope you're hungry to come and fellowship and to assemble yourselves together with His people to lift up holy hands unto Him, to worship Him and to praise Him. Amen. Whether it's midweek service, Sunday morning, Sunday night, whatever, that we come together and we can fellowship and we can strengthen one another and we can pray for one another. You can pray for me and I can pray for you because that's what, that's what it takes. One mind and one accord. And it's not a Honda. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stand. I don't know if anybody want to come pray. You can. Amen. And if you're freaking out because I was reading off a laptop, you can open up the book, the Bible, and go to Luke. And you can go to Matthew, and you can read exactly what I read. Uh it just was a lot easier for me to pull it up on the screen that way than to flip through the chapters. All right, remember I told you, I don't mind to work, but I don't like to work. That was, that was easier. Amen. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. If anybody needs to come pray. Amen. We do want to remember those that, uh, that do struggle uh, during this time of season because, you know, loved ones that have gone on. Uh, like I said, I, I really don't feel that mom's gone. I just feel like she's moved on to another place. And by God's grace, God's mercy, I'm going to be there with her. More, 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 more. Oh, glory. I'm going to get to see Jesus. I'm going to get to see my Lord and Savior. Amen. Yeah, what a day. What a day that shall be. My Jesus I shall see. Amen. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for this evening. We thank you for each one that's come out. Lord, we just ask for your hand upon each one. Take them back home safely, Father God, Lord. We ask that you continue to strengthen and encourage and be with us, Father, Lord. We ask that for those that are struggling that you help them to Focus more on you than on the struggle. To get into the Word more. To allow your angels to come and minister. To allow you to minister unto us. To allow you to lead and guide us. To give us that peace. 
that comfort, that joy, which is unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, I thank you for each one that's here. We love them. We love you. We just ask you to be with us and go with us and bring us back Sunday morning, Lord willing, and we'll get back right back into it. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen.